Hey there gang, in this series I'm going to show you how to use Vuex 4 with Firebase Auth. Alright then, so in this series I'm going to show you how to use Vuex 4 along with the Composition API in Vue 3 to set up a state management system for authenticating users with Firebase Auth so that you'll have a central global user state that you can access throughout the entire Vue application. But first of all, I just want to bring everyone up to speed and briefly explain what Vuex is and why we'd use it for something like this. Now, before we start, I want to make it crystal clear that you'll need to already have a decent grasp of Vue 3 before you start this course. So ideally, you'll understand what components and state are, you'll know a little bit about the Composition API, and basically understand how to put together a simple Vue 3 application. If you don't, then definitely check out either my full Vue 3 and Firebase course on Udemy or NetNinja Pro, or my smaller Vue 3 crash course on YouTube. The links to both are going to be down below the video. Also, if you're completely new to Firebase, I would suggest checking out my Getting Started with Firebase 9 course, first of all, too. Again, the link to that is going to be down below the video. Anyway, what is Vuex? Vuex is what's known as a state management pattern, and that's just a fancy way of saying that it's a method of managing global state that can be shared between multiple components in our Vue applications. So let me explain this a little bit more with a simple example. So say you have some kind of news website with lots of pages and components so that a part of our component tree might look something like this. And on this website, a user can log in and out. And when a user is logged in, the user information like their display name might be used in multiple different places or components in this application. For example, in a comments component, in a profile view component, in the avatar component in the navbar links, and in a sidebar avatar component as well. So that user information is state that's used in various different components across this application, right? And if the state ever changes, for example, if the user logged out or changed their display name, all of those components would need to reflect that change in state. So how would we manage that state and where would we store that global user state? Well, we wouldn't want to define the state in every component that uses it because then we'd have to manually update it in each of those components if it changes. So we'd have to lift that state up to a component which is a common ancestor to each of the components that use it. In this case, that would be inside the root app component. And then we'd have to pass that user state down as a prop to any component that uses it. Now, that would be a lot of passing down props to a lot of different places, including into components which don't even need that state. They just act as a vessel for the state and pass it down to the next one until it does reach a component that does need it. And also, if we needed to change that state from any of these components that use it, we'd have to emit events back up through the component tree to change it where it's originally defined in the root app components so that all of the other components that consume it can get the up-to-date state as well. Now, this is all kind of okay if you're not doing this very often and it's easy to manage, but as your applications get bigger, you start to add many more components and this whole pattern starts to get more cumbersome, you'll probably want to manage state like this in a more elegant way. And that's where Vuex comes into play. So with Vuex, we'd create something called a store. And that store is a place where we define our global shared state. In our case, that would be the user state. Then if a component needs to use that state, it can just reach out to the store and grab it from there. And we can do that from all of the components that use that state. So you can see already, this is much simpler because we're not having to pass the state down through multiple components as props. We're just reaching directly to the store where it's defined from the components that need it. Also on the store, we define functions which can update or mutate the state as well. And again, we can essentially call and run those functions from any component by reaching out directly to the store. And when that happens, our store can mutate or update the state on the store and then any component which uses that state will get that updated value. So in our case, if the user logs out and the user state is changed to null, then all of the components which use that state will get that updated user value of null. So this is the basic theory behind why we'd use Vuex in our applications. And in this series, we're going to use it to manage some global user authentication state along with the Firebase authentication service. 
So I've created course files for every single lesson in this series and to begin with we're going to be getting the course files for lesson one which is a starter project. Now all of the course files are on this repo right here, Vuex4 Firebase Auth, so I'll leave this link down below and if you want to see the code or download the code for a specific lesson, all you have to do is select the drop down here and then go to whatever lesson branch you want to see the code for. So for example, if I want lesson six code, I'd select this lesson six branch, I could see the code right here and I could download a zip folder of that code as well. Now, like I said, I prepared a starter project for this course, which is just a basic view project with a couple of pages and components already set up so we don't have to create those from scratch. And to get that, you want to go to the lesson one branch and then you can click on this button and go to download zip right here to download a zip folder of that branch. So I've already done that and it's right here. So what I'm going to do is right click on that and go to extract all and then extract it. And then once this has extracted, we need to go into that folder and open up this Vuex4 Firebase Auth Lesson 1 folder. And right here, you'll see a folder called My Blog. This is the project folder. So I'm going to right click this and open up that folder with VS Code. So my friends, this right here is now our starter project. So I do want to give you a quick tour of this project, but before we do that, I just want to install all of the dependencies first of all, because you'll notice that the node modules folder is not present because we got this from GitHub and typically we don't upload node modules to GitHub. So to install all of the dependencies listed right here, we need to install them using npm install in a terminal. So npm install, make sure you're in the correct project directory and press enter and that's going to include Vuex in itself because I've listed that as a dependency okay and the version notice is version 4.0.2 we need version 4 to allow us to work with the composition API and Vuex all right so that's going to install all of those for us and then you should see the node modules folder all right then so now let's quickly go through this project so first of all, we have the public folder, nothing special in here, just the HTML file that comes along for the ride when we create a new view project. And by the way, we are using view version three. You can see that inside the package.json file right here. So that's the HTML file. Then inside the source folder, we have an assets folder. And inside that we have a main.css file. Now this is kind of like a global CSS file that I'm going to apply to the website. And to be honest, the CSS is not really that important. I'm not here to teach you about CSS. This is just so it looks less crappy in the web page when we preview it. So at the top, you can see we just import a few Google fonts. We have one for pop-ins and one for material icons. So we can use some icons in the project. We have some base styles, navbar styles right here, some blog styles, and then some form styles as well. Like I said, not that important. The main.css file though is imported into the main.js file, which kickstarts the application right here so they can be used, all right? So after that, we have our views down here and inside that we have three different views because we have three different pages set up. Now, if we go inside the router file over here, you can see these three pages. So if we go to forward slash, then we get the home component. If we go to forward slash sign up, we get the sign up components. And if we go to forward slash login, we're going to get the login component. All right, so the sign up components and the login component are just simple forms. We see right here a title a label and an import for the email, a label and import for the password, and then a button to submit the form. When we do submit the form, it prevents the default action and we fire this function handle submit, which is down here inside the setup hook, by the way, this is using the composition API. So we have this handle submit function and all that does is log out the email value and the password value, which are refs and they're hooked up to the inputs using V model right here. Okay. So that's all we're doing. We're capturing the email and password. And then when they submit the form, we log out the values of those two things at the minute. Later on, we're going to sign the user up here. And you can see we return the handle submit email and password at the bottom here so we can be using them inside the template. Pretty similar for the login, only this time the title is login, the button says login, but it does the same kind of stuff. And later on, we will be logging the user in here. 
and then finally we have the home view and this is a little more complex we have the setup function right here and we define a ref which is an array of blog objects each blog just has a title and an id then we cycle through those using v4 right here the key is the blog id and then for each blog we have a div with a class of blog we output the blog title a load of lorem ipsum and then some icons at the bottom so a user can maybe upvote or downvote the article now we're not going to be doing that in this series i just wanted this here to make the design look a little bit better and this is also something that we're going to conditionally show later on as well all right okay then so that is the home view as well so what's next we have the app.view right here and inside that we nest the navbar component and the router view so this is where all the pages are at but the navbar is defined inside the components folder and you can see it's just a nav with a title then three different divs right here we have a div which has a link to the home page then we have a div for logged in users and that's going to say logged in as something or other and then a button to log out and then a div right here for logged out users and we have a link to forward slash login and one to forward slash sign up so ultimately a user when they're logged in is only going to see these links and this one when they're logged out they're only going to see these links and this one all right but at the minute because we've not implemented any of that functionality a user will just see all of these for now so that's pretty much it for this component. Now, the only other thing you're going to see is this folder right here called store and then an index.js file inside it. And nothing is inside that index file at the minute. This is where we're going to be creating our Vuex store later on. OK. All right, then. So that's pretty much all there is to it. So we can now preview this in a browser. Now, just quickly, before I do that, I said before that listed as a dependency was Vuex version 4, right? And it is, and we've installed that by typing npm install. But if you start a project from scratch, and these dependencies aren't here, if you want to install the Vuex version 4, all you have to do is say npm install Vuex at next. And that grabs you the Vuex version 4, the latest version, okay? We've already installed that, so we don't need to do that. All we need to do is run this in a browser. Now, to do that, if we open up the package.json, we can see we have this command right here, serve. So I can type npm run serve to do it. Press enter. It's going to spin up a local development server and give me a URL I can use to preview this on. And it's right here. So I'm just going to click on this, and that's going to open it up in a browser. And we can see what it looks like right here. So pretty simple, right? These are the blogs in the home components right here. And these are the little icons to upvote or downvote. Then we have all of the links showing in the navbar at the minute, the home, which goes to this page. Then this little thing that says logged in as later on, that's going to say something like logged in as Mario, if I'm logged in as Mario. And then we have a logout button, does nothing at the minute. The login form, and let me just zoom in a little bit and then open up the dev tools so we can see in the console if this works if i type in any old email like so and a password we should see that logged to the console yep and if i go to sign up this is going to do exactly the same thing so that is the starter project right there next up we're going to talk a little bit more about vuex and create a vuex store by the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series. And please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot. And I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.